Hello, hello, hello. What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Ron, a.k.a. Ron the Artist, coming to you live. And welcome to Ron's Recap. I'm here today to review and recap the TV show RuPaul's Drag Race, Season 14, Episode 8, titled 60s Girl Group. It was a good episode. It was a good episode. It was a good episode. Good episode. A little disappointed about the end game and the end results, but we're about to get into that. So let's get into it. Let's get into it. Let's get into it, guys. All right. So the episode started out with Lady Camden getting the praises for her winning for her winning from last week's challenge. Meanwhile, Daya is on a high as well. Daya Betty, she's on a high as well because that's the first time she was in the top two. <clears throat> when Jasmine was feeling some type of way about her not being in the top two. About not her her not being in the top in general. I still have no clue, honestly, why the girls feel some type of way of being safe. Like, you live to slay another day. But I get, I understand if you feel some kind of way about, like, not getting in the top when you honestly probably deserve to be in the top or in a winning spot or in the top two. I understand that, but when the girls are safe, don't be mad because you're safe. You live to slay another day, especially when you know that challenge or this week wasn't your best. So I never understand that. Just be happy that you're not on the chopping block. You know, do do better. Come harder next time. Okay, so next up, this week's mini challenge with the library. The library book, all of that good stuff where the girls are shading and roasting each other. Most of them were funny this week. This week in this episode, like most of them are funny, but it was Bosco, the one to take home the winning. She knocked it out of the park and won the challenge. Like she actually was the funniest one. Like she was the funniest one. Like I said, a lot of the girls, they were funny. Most of them were funny. I didn't see one girl where they was just like, blah. Most of the girls were funny. They had a lot of jokes that hit, but Bosco was the one who had the energy and Every single one of her jokes hit. So, Bosco it was. Bosco won. Okay, next up. It's time for the stage challenge with the 60s girl group. The girls had to group together in three. And in three different groups. They had to group together in three in three different groups. Tackling one song and a performance for each group. It was somewhat easy for some of the girls to decide on what song slash group they were going with. Until it got to the song, Bad Boy, or Bad Girl. Take your pick. Diabetti was so viciously obsessed over that song. And very, like, territorial about her spot in that song. And I'm like, girl, if you don't pipe it down, like, girl, it is not all that. It's not, like, you don't have to do all of that, like. There's two other songs. I mean, it was so territorial to the point where she's like, no, I'm, I'm, screw this. She didn't even want to play rock, paper, scissors, flip a coin, no nothing. She was just like, nope, I'm taking this spot. And it was between her and Deja Sky. I'm like, girl, Diabetes, you're doing too much. You're doing too much. You're doing too much. And... Again, by her not wanting to, you know, back down, by Diabetti not wanting to back down, I'm sorry, by Diabetti not wanting to back down, Deja Sky ended up going on to the next song, you know, to the other song with, with, um, Georges and Jasmine Kennedy. She ended up going to the song with them, the group with them, which probably was for the best, you know, but again, Diabetti is becoming too much. Just want to sound off on that part. On to the recordings of the songs. And Jeria was first. And in her first go, she practically killed it on the first try. And kudos to her. And Jeria, I am so proud of her. Like, most of this competition, she has been killing it. She's been killing most of this competition. And if she does not make it to the top four, we are going to have a problem. Like, Rue, 
you need to secure Injuria's spot in the top, in the top four now. Or Injuria, I should say, secure your spot in the top four now. Like yesterday. I feel like it's, it's secured already, but double secure that bad boy. Okay, so it, next up, like, I'm going to, with this, I just pretty much tap onto people that are the most noticeable or the most memorable for me versus going by every single contestant, you know, that remains. So the next up is Diabetti. Surprisingly, she killed her part too. And she killed it pretty quick. She better had, I literally wrote that she better had after all she did in the obsessive territorial energy she was given about that damn song. She better had killed it. And she did. So kudos to Daya. I'm no better hating person. I will give kudos when they're due. It's just, I'm feeling some kind of way about diabetes. And I'm, that's just what it is. So... That was that. You know, she killed the song. Deja Sky, she did pretty well. She did pretty well with her song as well. I was happy to see that. I was happy to see that because since she didn't get the song that she originally wanted, she was still able to go into a group and still flourish over there with her song. I was happy to see that. Meanwhile, Georges, she didn't do so great. She didn't so great didn't do so great with her recording at all. The voice was off and it just was not given what needed to be gave, baby. Georges, we've been talking about this for weeks now. I've been talking to you through this camera for weeks now. Georges, like, pull it together, love. Like, put it together. On to, you know, it's time for the actual performance practice. Starting with the group of Deja, Georgia, and Jasmine. Deja completely took over the group performance. When the other two members are the actual performers, like... I don't even know how to even let that happen. The other two are performers and dancers. How the hell did y'all let Deja Sky take over the choreography like that? And kind of boss y'all around with it as well. Jasmine and Georges. Like, come correct next time. So, pretty much, I was like, damn, girl, at least let the other two get somewhat of an input. Let them flourish and Explore it how they needed to. Like, they just got was so on Jasmine Kennedy about her cheerleading and it being one, two, three, four, like robotic, like, you know, what do they call it? Um, a, what a count, an A count or something like, yeah, they call it an A count. Like, it was a count. Like, that could have been incorporated in the choreography in some way, if you ask me. But they just got had control over it and she was like, no. So the next group. Willow, Bosco, and Diabetti. Willow took charge of that group in a healthy manner. Deja Sky, take notes. Willow took charge of it in a healthy manner. And apparently she used to be a choreographer of the story and never revealed it to the girls. I was gagged because it freaking showed, it showed, it showed, it showed. And as I think it was Carrie Kobe said in the, um, in the confessionals, like Willow... Pill holds all her cards close to her chest as she should. So the girls don't know how she's coming and what angle she's coming from. And it and it worked to her advantage in this scenario. She never revealed it to the girls, and that was strategic and brilliant, as I wrote. Strategic and brilliant. And I loved it. Again, it worked in our favor, and she controlled that choreography and in a healthy manner, and it worked out. And it, the choreography was cute. It was cute. It was cute. The last group, or the next group, I should say, the last group, Lady Camden and Juria and Carrie Colby. Lady Camden organized the the choreography with the other two members because the other two members have two left feet, literally. I was like, come on, Carrie, girl, Carrie Colby, like, girl, like, <laughs> and Juria, she, she gonna push through now. When it comes to the choreography, she showed that she will push through. She'll push through and she will make it shake. Carrie Kobe just stiff as I don't know what. And I'm like, girl, you got all this prettiness and gorgeousness going on and you can't even move it. Carrie Kobe, I'm going to need you to take some dance lessons or something of the sort because it needs to be given what needs to be gave. Do you hear me? I hope you watch this, Carrie Kobe. If you do, please comment. 
on this video, whether it's on YouTube or Instagram, let me know. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. So, you know, on to the girls preparing for the big stage after the practice performances were over. You know, Daya wanted to know why Jasmine had a grudge against her. And Jasmine told her exactly why. Because she shaded her in, in, un, in Untucked. She shaded, Daya Betty shaded Jasmine Kennedy in Untucked. Bitter and mad and pissed off because she wasn't in the top. In the top that week she did that doll thing. And she was salty. Again, so you placing your anger and aggression onto other folks and trying to tear the next person down, even though Jasmine Kennedy was probably in the bottom two that week, you didn't have to tear the girl down because of your bitterness even more. And you didn't even do it to her face. You did it behind her back and it got back to her and that's what it was. So pretty much, Justin Kennedy told her, like, I heard you was talking stuff about me in that untucked. And Diabetti didn't like it. Oh, well. This competition is clearly getting to Diabetti. Because it's showing in all her actions. Like, she is getting real possessive and territorial and just bitchy-like. And I get, you know, it's a, at the end of the day, this is a competition. And it's a show. So, you got to bring it. But it is coming off very nasty. Very nasty, where she's practically becoming the villain of the season. I said it. I said it. So I'm sure somebody else is saying it. Okay, on to the next. The 60s girl group performances. Willow, Diabetti, and Bosco's performance was presented first in the, the little video. And they killed it. They killed it, they killed it, they killed it, as I knew. The choreography and the lyrics flowed so well, and it was cute. Deja George's and Jasmine's performance was, it was next, and it was okay. Nothing super spectacular about it, in my opinion. Nothing, there was no it factor, in my opinion, but it wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. And lastly, they showed Lady Camden, Carrie, and Jerry's performance. It was cute. I love the dresses that they had on, and the way... The choreography and the lyrics just kind of flowed. It flowed so smoothly, and the choreography was soft as well. And Jerry channeled. She channeled, you know, Diana Ross gracefully, and it showed again, like I said. And Jerry will push through the choreography. She going to make it shake. She going to make it work. And Jerry is going to make it work. One thing about Jerry, she's going to make it work. She's going to figure out a way, and I love that about her. Love it about her. Love it about her. Love it about her. Her. So that's what it was. Ultimately, the first girl group, the first girl group killed it in my opinion. They were the best, such as you know, Diabetti, Willow, and Bosco. And it was and think about it, there was only one real dancer in that group, which was Willow. The other two weren't even dancers. The group that had the real dancers in it, that were the most dancers in it, let me say, let me not, let me not come for Lady Camden because she was a dancer in her group. But there was a group that had two dancers in it, such as Jasmine Kennedy and Georges with Deja Sky. And it really wasn't all that. And I'm like, that should have been y'all challenge where y'all came and showed the girls up and out. Like, Georgia, that was your moment to really show your dancing skills all the way. Baby. Baby. That was your moment to really soar with that performance. But okay. Next up. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. The Runways. Came to the Runways. Again, this is another moment where I, I don't discuss every contestant or every girl that's in the, in the competition. I just discuss the ones that, you know, I remember. Do's and don'ts. You know, good and bad. Willow being first. Super cute. Valentine's Day kind of vibe attire going on. And it showed a lot of skin and straps around her body. Cute. Bosco. Bosco gave a venomous yet sexy attire. You know, vampire love in white. <laughs> if I wrote that, vampire love in white and red. 
It was cute. Mostly, she had mostly white on. It was cute. And again, I always compliment Bosco on her eyebrows. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. Bosco, like, her eyebrows are so different. Like, she really enjoys drag, I can tell. Because the way she does that with her eyebrows, I don't see any other girl doing that with her eyebrows. And it's very artistic and unique. And again, I love Bosco's eyebrows. <laughs> Georges. Cute and it gave Victoria's Secret Angel with the, the heart wings and lingerie. I like this. I like this runway for Georges. I did. It really worked for her, you know, with the lingerie and it gave Victoria's Secret model. It gave Victoria's Secret the wings I really love. The wings really set the outfit off, in my opinion. It worked. Nigeria. Nigeria, much different than her usual pageant attire. It was much different than her usual, her usual pageant attire. She stated that in the confessional. You know, I'm not exactly sure if I like that runway look, but it gave Cruella DeVille the vibes. And they, as I literally was writing that down, someone said it on the panel. It gave Cruella DeVille vibes. Actually, I think I wrote that down before that was said by the guest judge. Like I said, I'm not sure if I liked it, but she did what she had to do. You know, Carrie, Carrie Colby, her runway. It gave sexy, bloody, sucking vampire devil like thing it's okay it wasn't bad but it, it was okay the judges didn't really care for it they didn't feel it made sense and yeah jasmine's attire jasmine's attire was a, just a violet burgundy like looking dress with just a few hearts attached to it meh meh that was probably the most disappointing look on the runway for me they kind of got on, the judges got on her about it, but not too much, in my opinion. They got on more so Lady Camden's look. Lady Camden's look, I didn't write nothing down about her look because it was okay as well, but it wasn't it. So I guess Lady Camden and Jasmine Kennedy's, their dresses were very similar in that manner where it was kind of little plain Jane, but with some extra accessories added to it but i guess maybe they were you know giving lady Campion you know, or going in on her a little bit more because she won last week's challenge she all across the board killed last week so maybe they went on her about that because and landed her in the bottom landed her in the bottom three but she was not in the bottom two the bottom two landed and resulted into jasmine kennedy and Kerry Colby. Meanwhile, Daya Betty won this week's challenge. Congratulations to her. You know, she swept the girls away this week. And I guess it was a good song choice for her after all. So that possessive territorial madness she had going on, it worked in her favor. Still not caring for her though, honestly. Because it's just giving nasty B-word energy. But I will give kudos and props to where they're due. She killed it this week. She killed the performance. Her song was dope. And her her runway. Honestly, that runway too, I didn't write anything about that. But her runway was, I didn't really care for it. It was too different in my opinion. It was different from most of the girls. They had these cute, you know, lovey-dovey Valentine's Day type of attire. She went with a punk rock type of love type of attire. And I didn't like it, but the judges loved it. I just loved it. So that's what it was. It was too different in my opinion. They loved the two differentness. And it landed her that win. So again, kudos to her. Kudos to her. So again, the bottom two resulted into Jasmine Kennedy versus Kerry Kobe. That lip sync. Both of them did both of them did good in my opinion. Real good. But Jasmine Kennedy went a bit more harder. The girl lost a freaking heel and still slayed Kerry Kobe in the freaking lip sync. I'm like, no. I did not want to see my girl, Carrie Kobe, get murdered like that. Carrie Kobe, she gave a little bit. She gave, like I said, she did the little Vogan situation. I wish she could have went a little harder with that Vogan and really showed up and showed up with that. That might have amped up that performance a little bit. But Jasmine Kennedy lost a freaking heel, was performing all up and through that freaking runway with one heel on and still slayed. Twirls and spins and splits and... 
flips and all of that and killed Kerry Kobe in that lip sync. I'm like, oh my God. No, 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 no. So due to those actions, it sent Kerry Kobe, Kerry Kobe home. And honestly, I am not happy about that. I've said, I try to keep it biased um, to my favorites in the competition. I will sometimes say it, but I try to keep it biased and I make it so obvious who I really, really love. But Kerry Kobe, I was seeing Kerry Kobe for sure. And she didn't have the, the chocolate golden bar. I was so sad about that. So, so sad about that. Sigh. Kerry Kobe, you will be missed. You will be missed. She was in my top four. Kerry Kobe was in my top four. That was mad disappointing seeing her go. All right, on to the untucked. I wrote a few comments about the untucked. In the untucked, George just brought up T.S. Madison's name from her appearance last week. And I was happy to hear it. If you were, if you guys have watched last week's vlog, you know that I love T.S. Madison. I love T.S. Madison. I love T.S. Madison. And the fact that they are still bringing her up goes to show she has an impact on the girls. She has an impact on the girls and the girls love her and they respect her. And T.S. Madison has somewhat of an input. No, somewhat. She screwed the somewhat. T.S. Madison has this, an impact on TV and her presence, her story. And she inspires others by her story. And by her words and wisdom. Like she inspires people and she's loved for that. It's a whole nother week where T.S. Madison isn't even on the judging panel anymore. She isn't even in sight of the competition and still being brought up. And kudos to that. You know, at this point, Rue just needs to make T.S. Madison a regular judge at some point. Like bring T.S. Madison to the show regularly. I said what I said. The last thing I want to say is. I'm so sad to see Gary Kobe go home with her gorgeous self. Like, her little stunning, gorgeous self. Like, that girl was real pretty. She was pretty. She knew it. The judges knew it. Everybody knew it. Too pretty, as they said. And she's admitted it where the girls in L.A., you know, they usually praise the living heck out of the girls in L.A. for being pretty and just gorgeous. So she got adapted to that. And that really didn't work in her favor in this competition. But for the most part, She's very polished, very polished, and it showed, and I appreciated that, and I adore that, and I respect her for that. I love Kerry Kobe. She has a presence. She has a presence. I love Kerry Kobe. You know, it was just sad to see her go. So, that's all I got for you guys this week. It's your boy Ron, a.k.a. Ron the Artist. And if you're watching this with me right now on Instagram, we are live. If you're watching this on YouTube, it is not live. It has been taken from Instagram and uploaded to there. If you're watching on, on if you're watching this on YouTube, please subscribe, like, comment, or share this video. Please comment. Let's talk about the review this recap. What did you like about the episode? What did you not like about the episode? How did I do in this recap? Did you like it? Did you not like it? Let's talk about it. If you're watching this on Instagram, let's talk about it. Comment, like, follow me. I can be followed and found on Instagram at rta.tv. That's R-T-A dot TV. I can be found on YouTube at Ron the Artist or Art Ron TV. No, I'm sorry. Art Ron 14. Art Ron 14. <laughs> Lastly, Drag Race fans, please be nice in the comments. No disrespect or ignorance will be tolerated in the comments. Please be respectful. I dearly appreciate that. Please and thank you. So until we meet again, guys, next week, Peace.